Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. Another daylight video review, which uh, is pretty rare. Again, that means I had a little bit of time off. And you know, sometimes when you have time off, you have a lot of other things to take care of. And so it's difficult. I mean, I would like to have a scenario where I could just run through a whole bunch of um, video reviews during those precious times when I actually have some time to myself during the day. But most of the time, that's not the case. And also, it takes a while to set up. I mean, I have some stuff that's pretty easy just to kind of bring out, plop out on the turntable, start talking. But some of the other stuff is, you know, not very convenient places. I've been collecting for many, many years, over ugh, 15, 16 years. Maybe even, no, no, it's 20 years, getting close to 20 years. So, um, you know, hard to set up. But for now, I'm going to try to do a few pieces that I can, I can more easily put up. So last two videos, I, I uh, showed Leather Jacket and Primeval Princess. We've been uh, sort of wrapping that up. And so I wanted to continue the series. Now, this is a really rare kit. I don't see many of these painted up at all. And it's been decades. I think there's mine and th there might be maybe a couple more. But, you know, these kits are, number one, really hard to get. And then number two, they're not easy to build. I mean, they're pretty challenging uh, pieces to build. And so I think the kind of the labor it takes to do it or the money it takes to commission someone to do it uh, makes it sort of difficult. Uh, excuse the glare because of the time of the day. Uh, the light is kind of right behind me. So... There is a bit more of a glare on the iPad. But I'm talking about, again, Vampire's Kiss, which uh, is based off of the extraordinary painting by Boris Vallejo. And this is, again, as with all of them, sculpted by Steve West of Cellarcast. So this is the original source painting. I always try to show that. Uh, and it's good to see that because you can kind of get, get an idea of how amazing um, John Allred did and what an amazing job he did sort of copying the, um, the paint and uh, staying true to the source material. Both Steve West in the sculpture and John Allred um, in the actual painting uh, did a phenomenal job, of course. But um, here it is. This is uh, the, I think, I don't need to explain what Vampire's Kiss means, right? This is the Vampire's Kiss, which is actually really about death more than anything else. And as with a lot of Boris Vallejo's um, you know, paintings, that's very striking. It's sort of this mixture of horror and sensuality all blended together. Um, and there's definitely, you know, Boris is definitely amazing at drawing the female figure. Not just the female figure, but the male ones too. Remember that Boris Vallejo um, was famous for painting the covers of all the Tarzan books and the Conan the Barbarian books. So he does male musculature, male anatomy incredibly well. Um, but you know, he's good, of course, with females. Look at the, the detailing on this painting with the hair. And, you know, again, there's this vampire. It's kind of interesting because this vampire is not like, you know, like Bela Lugosi's Dracula. This is clearly like a monster. Um, you know, a, basically like a man bat, essentially. Um, so this is it. So now that you have an idea of what the source painting looks like, paying special color to the uh, coloration of the wings and also the pattern of the snake, sta uh, the snake scales, we're going to move over to the actual kit um, sculpted by Steve West of Cellarcast and painted by John Allred. Um, so this is another limited edition. I have three of them. So the Vampire's Kiss, the Primeval Princess, and the leather jacket were all limited editions. Unfortunately, the leather jacket's name plaque uh, was lost. You know, I don't think I lost it. I think it might have just been lost or misplaced uh, when they shipped uh, the kit to me. Because when I shipped it to John, he just said, hey, sorry, you know, that's missing. So I don't have that, even though it is a limited edition. Uh, because the box of the kit clearly states that. Uh, they're all one of a series, so I have 21 of 25 for both Leather Jacket, Vampire's Kiss, and Primeval Princess. Um, so let's take a look here, starting with the base. Uh, now, you only get a hint of this in the painting uh, of the, um, the skulls and the skeletons, kind of, you know, giving you a hint of all of the, um, the previous victims of this vampire. 
But here at the base, uh, it kind of gives you quite a bit more. You can kind of see all the, the texturing and the details. I don't know whether this is um, the roots, little fungi. There's a skull as well, some rocks. So just sort of moving along. Yeah, this is kind of more clearly fungus and mushrooms. And at the very back, of course, uh, you see Boris Vallejo, sculpted by Steve West, and then the cellar cast symbol. So we see a little bit more of the fossilized remains. Skulls, things like that. We're back to the beginning again, so looking up. So these are the scales, but well, here it is. The vampire. Just wanted to kind of give a little bit more detail to um, the snake. So you can see beautifully textured. And remember all of this was by hand. So that was insane. All of this had to be done by hand. No uh, computer work, no 3D printing. You can't be lazy. This is all done, sculpted by hand, and then, cast, and then molded and cast by Steve himself in his, um, I guess, his basement or cellar or garage. And if you look at the, the paint here and, you know, what John did, he recreated it beautifully. Moving all the way around, all of these scales. That's a lot of work, a lot of work. I've had this, ironically, in my garage for uh, probably the better part of four or five years. So, you know, it is a little bit dusty, if a part of the dust, but I think that doesn't take away, or hopefully doesn't take away from the, the beautifully detailed uh, work that John put here. Take a look here again, all of the different shades, the patterns, and of course the undersurface of the, of the snake is more pale. And then we have the famous hug. So here you get to see the vampire himself. Even his head is scaly. Everything about him is scaled, even the arms. You can see the webbing between the fingers. And then of course, the, the striking part of this composition, both in painting form and, uh, you know, is, and in the kit form, kind of giving you an idea that this is not just an erotic embrace, is you get a feeling for how tightly um, you know, that right hand, that rib, the right webbed claw, not really a hand, is gripping her and then the nail digging in and a little tiny drop of blood coming out. Um, when you see it here, you can see that little drop of blood right here. It's kind of hard to see the glare, but it's very striking. It's one of the most striking parts of the painting. And of course it's um, recreated here in uh, both sculpt and paint. Then you have the hair. So of course, you can't, it's hard to um, replicate the beautiful hair that's on the painting here. You can actually see the individual strands. Um, but you can see the brown hair right over here. And then he, John even got the shading of the wings with the, the purplish shade. You can see this purple here. Now that's mainly because of the light source in the background. So he wanted to recreate that, um, that effect. So you can see the, the purple. It just sort of gradually, you know, shades in to the green. So I think that he did an amazing job there. And then of course, when you turn around, um, this is the back end. And there, Steve had to use his imagination for what the wings had to have looked like, what the back had to have looked like. He sculpted all of that. Here's the arms. If you want to get a look at the face, there she is right over here. So, you know, kind of a nice interpretation, interesting interpretation. Her eyes are closed. There she is. The same type of face that you see in Primeval Princess and Leather Jacket is here too. A bit crude, but decent enough. This is a angle that you'll typically never ever see. Then, Here's the rest of the beginnings of the torso, all the way back, and then where the pattern of the scales start with the rest of the snake. 
more detail on the inside of the wings. Again, these are all details imagined by Steve West to be um, consistent with the overall composition. And under natural light, you're able to see this, uh, of course, quite a, quite a bit better. You wouldn't be able to quite catch this if I did this at night. So we're gonna do this on the side. Again, you can kind of see how her legs are. I don't know if they actually sculpted the naughty bits. Oh, well, they did sculpt the naughty bits, believe it or not, and John painted it. But um, again, you can't really, uh, or nor you're not really meant to be seeing that <laughs> level of detail, but that's, you gotta hand it to them. That's very, um, you know, they're being very thorough. Uh, obviously during this embrace, you would see that. So yeah, from this angle, you can clearly tell in the background that uh, that little bit of attention was, was made. That little bit of attention to detail was made. See the little claws here as well. The anatomy is accurate to what we're seeing here, um, but in the resin form, it, it is a little bit crude. In other words, you know, modern uh, techniques could definitely uh, print out um, you know, a better human body. There's just you know, a little bit of like, not quite as smooth, you can see a little bit of splotch here. You can see a little um, speckling sometimes, right? It's, just a little bit here, especially the shoulder blades. There's a little bit of that crudity of sculpt, which is a hallmark of the era that this was made in, which is fine. Again, um, remember these pieces were not meant to be appreciated from literally a centimeter out like this. You move back. Let me turn on the, the motor. So I would say you know, sitting here in my chair, probably about two feet away with my iPhone camera right in front of my uh, mouth, same distance, but this is kind of about where you enjoy uh, the piece. It's a uh, phenomenal, it's amazing. Really, really looks great. Get to hopefully appreciate the details it was meant to be, right? Not macro. I mean, not microscopic, but more macro view. Just enjoy sort of the pose, the naturalness of it, that juxtaposition of the monstrous and the beautiful. Again, the horror and the erotic. Great work done on the scales and then the wings. I had this commissioned by John so many years ago. Um, I mean, if I were to you know, make any improvements I probably would have asked John to make the wings uh, maybe a little bit more glossy uh, to make the scales a bit more wet. You know? um, I don't know if that would have been as accurate to the painting, um, but that's probably the one improvement I would have changed if I had done it, uh, if I had to do it all over again, like you know, like today or something. But overall, still very very pleased with it. Um, fits in really nicely. And again, at the time at least of um, when I commissioned John, this was one of the few, it's gotta be either, I think two, maybe one of two that was completely built. Um, 25, so, uh, you know, 25 limited edition or special edition uh, castings, which is the earliest ones with the best quality. And even after that, they could have been more than about, I would say 50, maybe less than that that's out there in the wild, so to speak. So these are kits that are considered collector's items, very rare. Um, kit builders really are still you know, in search of them. Um, but you know, it's, a, it's a, different, a different level of collecting. Um, I would say a couple hundred dollars, maybe $500, $400 would be the upper limit for something like this. Uh, leather jacket was the more sought after piece. Uh, so it's a completely different league, of course, from some of the, the custom kits or statues that are going for 1500 2000 3 4 5 I think it's sky's the limit, right? A Grey Hulk from Sideshow is like ten grand, nine grand, eight grand. Um, but as far as that goes, uh, this realm, you know, at this level, uh, I think a few hundred dollars, probably close to four, closer to four versus three, 
for something that's uh, so old and out of print is sort of the value if you can even find one of these these days so yeah it's a rare little gem for my collection that, I ha that i've had for the better part of a decade i'm really really happy with the job that uh, john did on it um, and as i'm sort of just rambling and reminiscing the turntable is moving so you can again take your time to uh, appreciate the sculpt and the paint from all the different angles uh, i guess since we have a chance I'll just go a little bit closer in. This is a little bit closer. You can appreciate some of the coloring, the details. Try to hold the camera in one position while the turntable does the work for me. And then just sort of sliding up. Again, this is the back. Really nice and the wings. There I have it. The work of Frank Frazetta and Boris Vallejo are filled with just fantasy art. You know, men, women, like muscular men, scantily clad women, monsters, beasts. A lot of potential inspiration for fan, uh, for statues, but uh, unfortunately, they don't really sell very well. You can actually see like the, the rib cage a little bit. Move it over here. You can kind of see the side, the side breast pressed against him, and then the, the rib cage, all of that stuff together. It's hard to paint, you know. This is remember these kits are not keyed for uh, painting like some of the modern kits are. So um, it's, you know, it's a challenge for John to have gotten in there to do all of the, the detail work. Uh, they really are hugging very tight and then it's one piece. So good stuff. You can see the shadows that he put in there and how close the, the two bodies are. All right, well, I think that's about enough for me. Um, Vampire's Kiss, sculpted by Steve West, seller cast, painted by John Allred, inspired by the art of Boris Vallejo. There's only one more left in the series, in these series of uh, four. Uh, and uh, that one's going to be a little bit hard. You, might got, you guys, unfortunately, have to wait a little bit, I think, for this one, for that one, because it's Amazon's pet. But I had that painted first. Uh, this, that was the one I got way long ago, probably close to over 10 years ago, 13 years ago, 12 years ago. And I had John paint that up first, and I put it behind glass in one of my display cabinets. And right now, that room is really, you know, kind of packed tight and so it's going to be difficult to get that one out but um i'll try to do that and then i'll try to make another little video with all four of them next to each other i think john did a really nice one uh he, he put a picture up on facebook where he showed all of the steve west seller cast kits that he built for me over the past decade and it just looks pretty amazing but those are just pictures of his finished work um sort of in a collage uh, and i think it might there might be a really cool experience to see uh, all for them in person in kit form on YouTube video as well. So I'll try to make that happen, um, you know, in the near future. But for now, um, this is it, Vampire's Kiss. Hope you enjoy that. And until next time, do take care. Hey, everybody, just um, <clears throat> a little postscript that I'm going to edit onto the back of my main review. I was going back to the garage and I found this, you know, so I just wanted to add to that. This is the official certificate for Vampire's Kiss. Again, you can see it's pretty classy. Uh, they actually made a little certificate for it. It's numbered 21 and 25, it's a special edition. And you can see it's officially licensed, uh, which just like I discussed last time with my Primeval Princess review, uh, back in the day, you know, garage kits normally are not licensed. So number one, it's very nice that uh, they were able to do this with Boris Novalejo himself. Um, and it just adds a little bit of that legitimacy to a kit that very often uh, is lacking. So it also came with this sort of um, instruction booklet. Uh, this is the front. As you can see, that's the original uh, kit right there. I mean, somebody must have painted it, did a good job for sure. And then here you can see the same uh, dedication. And then the same sort of uh, biography that I showed you with Primeval Princess is the same thing. 
you can pause it and read it any time you want. And then here again, um, I just find it really interesting because this is a bygone era. You know what I mean? Um, this is almost like a model airplane, uh, except it's not an airplane, obviously, or even a model car, but it's an actual statue for you to to pin, uh, to paint, to clean up. Um, of course, you know, you need to be someone really good like John uh, to do this justice. But I think, um, at least on the surface, you maybe, you know, the conceit is that with enough practice, um, you could do it yourself. Um, it almost feels like it was you know, meant to be sold to like, you know, I don't know, a teenager or something like that, or you know, a younger you know, boy or girl who's interested in modeling and you have everything you need. So check it out and they give you all of the, the parts. And then they tell you about sort of general preparation. They give you a nice little diagram telling you where you have to glue things together, how everything fits, how the parts come together. So as you can see, um, you know, the vampire and the lady uh, are in one piece. So John had to do all of this painting, literally. Um, you know, he had to go around the edges and stuff. A lot of labor, not very easy. And then he put it all together. And then some of the materials, you know, just cool stuff if you want to read it and, and get an idea for how these kits were like back in the old days. So the instructions, the certificate of authenticity, blast from the past. So anyways, that's it. Uh, thanks for hanging around for the postscript. Until next time, take care.